Greetings citizens of the world, we are Anonymous. We are reaching out to you in such a direct manner because we have exhausted every other avenue. We would like to take a few minutes of your time to inform you about the United States government's plan to murder over 120 million citizens. We do not have enough time to reveal all of the evidence or history on this plot. You must find the truth out for yourself. Open your eyes. People are already disappearing in the USA. The homeless are being rounded up in the night by military persons and disposed of. Mass graves are already in place as well as millions of coffins that President Obama has built himself for the citizens of the US. Each crematorium ready coffin can fit five bodies easily. The citizens of America have already been divided into groups based on data gathered on them by census records. NSA spying and labeled by markers on their mailboxes. There are three groups. The dead group the re-education group, and the compliance group. The citizens labeled for the dead group are going to be rounded up beginning in mid-July and taken to one of over 800 FEMA camps in the US each prepared to exterminate and dispose of over 220,000 people at one time. These camps have been built over many years and are equipped, guarded and functioning as we speak. The citizens labeled to be re-educated will be sent to the camps to be brainwashed re-educated, until the government deems them fit for circulation back into society. Lastly, the compliance group are those who the government does not see as a threat but as those able to be bribed or simply weak enough to comply with anything the government demands. Already, in the US, soldiers from all branches of military are set up and actively running night raids in civilian homes and more are coming daily. Law enforcement is set up to work with them. New military vehicles and equipment are being injected into the society every day. Obama states the purpose of this is for a drill that will help train military for combat situations and to get the public used to interacting with them. The United States of secrecy has kept you all blind, just like the US citizens are kept blind. Bills have been passed secretly, without going through Congress, without being seen or approved by anyone but the President alone bills that make martial law easily available, indefinite detention and torture of any citizen without hearing or trial legal, as well as the assassination of any US citizen without need for explanation unrestricted by dictator Obama. The United States has been a police state for many years now but it is coming to a head. Obama is planning on implementing martial law so he can further control the population, murder citizens, stay in power and eventually bring about a new world order. Already Russia, China, and countries in Europe are in alliance with the US on this and plan to aid in creating one world government. We are not here today to discuss this but to help save the people. If you think the American Holocaust will not affect you, you are sadly mistaken. This is going to spread. This is already taking place. People are already being murdered. The United States citizens need your help to save the country and their lives. It is time to wake up. It is time to stand and unite, as citizens of the world. If millions of us fall, we all fall. If millions of us are murdered, we can all be murdered. If you turn a blind eye now, the same will be done to you. This message may seem desperate and unbelievable to you. It is, the people of the US are desperate. The corruption in the government of the United States of America is unbelievable. Now that you know people will die, what will you do about it? We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget, citizens of the world. We must unite before it is too late. Tonight, we are a nation of extremes. The East is cleaning up after vicious storms knocked down trees, snapped power lines, and wrecked buildings. Folks were jolted out of bed by nonstop roaring thunder. In the West, at least 30 large wildfires are thriving on the long drought and relentless heat. 
We have two reports this evening, and first we'll go to Wyatt Andrews in the nation's capital. Wyatt? Scott, residents stretching from Virginia to New Jersey say that last night's thunderstorms, like the one that took out this 150-foot tall oak tree, were extremely violent and very frightening. It was in the forecast as a thunderstorm, but what developed was a much larger weather system in which clusters of storms crashed together. The collision of storms created a phenomenon called wet microbursts, random gusts of hurricane and gale force winds. One of those gusts destroyed this marina in Maryland. Another hit Whitehall Township, Pennsylvania, where Jenny Danica heard the storm gathering and barely escaped. So we just went in and ran down into the basement and a few seconds later heard the loud crash of the roof coming down. In New Jersey, residents like Paul Marositz described rain and hail coming in sideways. The wind was, was worse than Sandy, that's how loud it was. In Washington, the storm created a spectacular light show, but also forced a group of Girl Scouts camping out at the White House to seek shelter in the executive office building. This microburst storm was part of a weather pattern that forecasters call the ring of fire, the high pressure and hot air that's dominated the east and the south from New England to Texas throughout the month of June. Colder air slamming into the ring from all directions brought floods to Texas and record rainfall in the east. Washington in June got three times the normal amount of rain. I'm Carter Evans. Here in the West, it's another day of triple-digit temperatures from California to Washington State, where hot weather is fueling a new wildfire. Flames forced dozens to flee their homes in Quincy. 30 miles away near Wenatchee, some evacuees returned to find their houses burned to the ground. Heavy hail pelted the city of Tucson, where the hot weather caused severe thunderstorms. Dramatic photos and videos from Phoenix showed intense lightning overnight. The high temperatures are caused by a high pressure system stalled over nine western states, trapping them under a heat dome. They won't have power back on until 6.30 in the morning. In Los Angeles, cooling off next to an air conditioner was not an option for some after a power outage left nearly 21,000 customers in the dark. The state's utilities are now urging Californians to conserve electricity in what's known as a flex. A very dangerous weather system. We've already seen it damage uh, on the ground. Take a look now. These are uh, some very ominous looking images. Uh, CNN meteorologists, I don't know if we can uh, take down that banner, if that would help at all, I get, or if, if there's nothing really to see on the ground there. But I mean, you really get a sense of just how large this system is. I want to go to our meteorologist, uh, Tom uh, Sater. He joins us with the latest on what's going on. W what are you seeing here when you look at what's going on? What is this? A funnel cloud? Uh, yeah, it's a well, it's a massive supercell storm right now, Anderson. That is showing rotation as you can see it. Now, trained weather spotters have spotted a tornado that was on the ground near Lee's Summit, Missouri. This is just to the southeast of the Kansas City metro area. Uh, so along with this, it's moving southeast away from Kansas City, and you can see there's debris now. There is debris on the ground, so we're getting this uh, not only now a Doppler-indicated rotation, but you can start to see the damage. No reports of damage from the previous touchdown of this. This is all in a watch, a tornado watch from Kansas City, Kansas, down toward Joplin, Missouri, over toward Central Missouri in Columbia, where the University of Missouri is. This is in effect until midnight. Now, this warning most likely that was extended uh, to run from 7 uh, Central Time to 7.30 will most likely be extended. But you can see there's the transformers that are blowing now. So the strong circulation on the ground. Earlier, Anderson, you couldn't see it much because it was wrapped in rain. But this is a big indication. Look at the monster sized storm. This is, of course, the bottom of the supercell as the atmosphere is extremely volatile right now from parts of eastern Kansas across into central Missouri. I wouldn't be surprised, too, if the National Weather Service extends the tornado watch for central Missouri eastward to include the metropolitan area. Of Kansas. Authorities have initiated an emergency response after a 6.5 magnitude earthquake struck its northwestern Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Six people have died in the quake, which rocked Bishan County Friday morning at a depth of 10 kilometers. About 3,000 houses have been damaged. The tremor was also felt in neighboring Yecheng County, prompting the immediate evacuation of residents. At least 29 aftershocks have been reported since the earthquake. The Ministry of Civil Affairs and the China National Commission for Disaster Reduction have sent work teams and soldiers to assist relief efforts in place. This may be the epicenter in a fight over same-sex marriage. What do we want? Marriage equality! When do we want it? Now! 
Granbury, Texas, a small town roughly 65 miles southwest of Dallas, boasts the first town square in Texas. Welcome to God's country. The town may be the last to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. It's one man and one woman. That is how marriage should be. Jim Cato and Joe Stapleton have been together for 27 years and were prepared to get married on Monday. It was their first opportunity after the Supreme Court declared gay couples have a constitutional right to marry. They want their license to read Hood County, where they live and pay taxes. But so far, the county's clerk, Katie Lang, is holding up the process. We want to be the first people in Hood County to get married. We thought we would be married on Monday, but uh, not going to happen. Lang initially said she would not issue the licenses because of her own religious objection. But then later in the week, she said she would allow other members in her office to do so. But couples like Jim and Joe have been told the proper paperwork has not arrived. But in similar small counties like San Saba, Texas, the logistical issues have been worked out, and gay couples like Jonathan Means and Jason White successfully obtained a license while Jim and Joe continue to wait. Like, when do I come in your office? She said, I don't know. And everything was she didn't know. Lang's reluctance has sparked a bitter battle from both sides in this normally quiet town. Religious freedom supporters on one side of the street, gay rights activists on the other. One side defending Lang's right to object. We have a message for Katie Lang. You are not alone. Your community is here with you the other demanding she abide by the Supreme Court's order or quit. Get on board with equality or resign today. Baltimore Police Department already under fire for his uh, alleged role in April's death of Freddie Gray. Now more controversy in this city. This uh, department now investigating in the wake of this questionable sign discovered inside one of these uh, prisoner transport vans. And you see on the inside of the door it reads, enjoy your ride because we sure will. Uh, this photo is now circulating and some, including police officials, are calling the wording, and I quote, concerning and unacceptable. Listen, you know the story about Freddie Gray he suffered that critical neck injury after being left handcuffed and shackled in the back of a van similar to this one that made several stops before medics finally were able to treat him. He died later at the hospital. in Perth has caused dramas for domestic and international flights. It's the second day the runway has been blanketed, causing planes to be diverted. 8.30am, Perth Domestic Airport veiled in a thick fog. This SkyWest plane disappears into the sky in just a couple of seconds. The fog caused massive delays at both airports today. At one stage, visibility was down to just 40 metres on the runway. An AirAsia flight from Kuala Lumpur to Perth was diverted to Bali because of the conditions. Passengers were stranded at Denpasar Airport for seven and a half hours. Sign of the severity of the western drought. The artificial lake that supplies Las Vegas is at its lowest point ever. And officials have been forced to build another pipeline to draw water from the lake because the other two are starting to surface above the waterline. Take a look at the so-called bathtub ring around Lake Mead. It's the biggest it's ever been. The lake was created by the Hoover Dam built in the early 1930s. The water comes from melted snow from the Rocky mountains, but snowfalls have been smaller than average, and the lake is now 140 feet lower than it was when first created. That's the height of a 20-story building. Besides Las Vegas, the lake supplies water to parts of California and Arizona. And that rain caused problems on the east side of Kansas City, 23rd at 435 tonight. People were trapped in some nearby businesses for a time. One person had to be rescued by boat. A Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department battalion chief on the scene expressed his appreciation to Brian Busby and the First Alert weather team tonight. Hey, Brian. 
I appreciate the help. That's what I needed to hear. There's so much water here now. If we get another downpour, I'm going to make these people come out. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Take a look at this map. You can see there are 17 large fires actively burning across Oregon and Washington. Now, officials have told us it could be the worst year ever for wildfires. Chris Holmstrom has this update. Chris? Yeah, Jenny, wildfire season came three weeks early this year. And as you mentioned, there are 17 active fires. They burned more than 50,000 acres. Now, we're only talking about large fires at this point. This includes either 100 acres in timber or 300 acres in grass or brush. Currently, the largest fire is the Corner Creek Fire. It's in central Oregon. It's consumed more than 26,000 acres, and it's only 15% contained. Another large fire, the Niagara Fire near Detroit Lake, that one has burned 70 acres and is only 15% contained as well. Experts say this is about double the fires in the same time period in an average over the past 10 years, making for a busy season for firefighters. Since we are starting so early this year, we are looking at the long-term fatigue and the long-term efforts of these fire crews. And we have safety officers in place um, looking at that, and we're trying to mitigate um, the effects of the heat-related illnesses. A massive sinkhole at least 25 feet wide and several feet deep. The images are startling and the fear for passing drivers very real. We were just driving down Shane, and the next thing you know, we just missed this giant sinkhole. It's amazing that we didn't fall in. Pastor Barry Randolph and his niece narrowly missing the huge hole as they drove down Shane near Medbury. At the time, the sinkhole wasn't marked, alerting them and other drivers to the danger. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, this is crazy. And for it to be in the city streets, just broad open, nothing around it, anything could have happened. Pastor Barry and his niece didn't keep driving. They turned around and with the help of Good Samaritans blocked the road until help could arrive. There was no cones. Uh, we blocked it off with our cars. DTE was across the street. There was a checker cab driver right next to us and we just kind of blocked it off, called the police. They were here within a few minutes. Neighbors say crews were out here last Friday to patch the roadway. Then this happened sometime today. You can also see all that water gushing out of there, and I don't know how deep it is, but somebody could have been seriously hurt. Within an hour of alerting Detroit Water and Sewage Department to the caving roadway, crews arrived to begin repairs. <laughs> Pastor Barry, a man of God, believes it's a miracle he and others didn't get hurt. God is good. I can't believe that either. And I mean, we just missed it. That was truly scary. U.S.-led airstrikes are hitting the heart of ISIS-controlled territory in Syria. The Pentagon says warplanes unleash one of their largest ever bombardments on the eastern city of Raqqa. The weekend strikes targeted bridges and transit routes in the group's self-declared capital. Elizabeth Palmer is in Latakia, Syria, with more on the stepped-up fight. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning. These airstrikes were among the heaviest, if not the heaviest, since the bombardment began last September. The target was infrastructure, roads and especially bridges. 16 of them were targeted and destroyed. It's going to make it very difficult for ISIS fighters to move around the city because it's divided into sections by waterways. And it's also cut the city of Raqqa off from the system of highways across the river that leads into Iraq or deeper into Syria. Also targeted was a van full of ISIS fighters, according to activists, and the seven civilians standing nearby who just happened to be there were killed. ISIS fighters were actually live tweeting, and they said that the city of Raqqa was shaking. Beijing is urging Chinese tourists visiting Turkey not to go out alone. This is part of a safety warning sent out by the Chinese government uh, after it says that a number of Chinese tourists were harassed and attacked during anti-Chinese protests that erupted in several Turkish cities over the course of the weekend. In some of these demonstrations, which were quite small, uh, you did see demonstrators in some cases setting fire to Chinese flags and in one case pursuing East Asian visitors in uh, a tourist magnet part of Istanbul. Turkish riot police stepping in to protect those visitors and one of them then turned as uh, she was fleeing to cameras and listen to what she had to say. I'm not Chinese. I'm not Chinese. I'm Korean. 
Some Turks have been objecting to what they claim is uh, China's uh, mistreatment and discriminating policies against China's uh, ethnic Uyghur minority, which also happens to be Muslim. The Turkish government last week, its foreign ministry sent a statement to the Chinese authorities expressing concern over reports of an alleged ban on a Ramadan, the Muslim month of Ramadan, in China's western Xinjiang province that the Uyghurs come from. Now, the Chinese government has vehemently denied that there are any policies against Ramadan. It claims that there is freedom of religion uh, enshrined in China's constitution. However, we've seen on some local government websites in Xinjiang uh, instructions to local administrators to prevent students, to pre prevent civil servants and Communist Party members from fasting during the Muslim month of Ramadan. Uh, and this is creating a, a buildup in tensions between Turkey and China because many Turks have close cultural, religious, and ethnic links to China's In South Carolina's Senate chamber Monday, passionate words over a divisive symbol. It is also a flag that brings back horrible memories of slavery and again is now used frequently as a symbol of hatred and bigotry and racism. After five hours of debate, the state Senate voted overwhelmingly to remove the Confederate flag from South Carolina's State House grounds, rejecting an amendment that would have let voters decide. I believe a majority of South Carolinians would like to see it up, and I believe I'm speaking for a majority of South Carolinians. So I, I would like to prove that with a vote. The flag has become a flashpoint since the killing of nine people last month during Bible study at Charleston's Emanuel AME Church. The alleged gunman, Dylan Roof, had been photographed brandishing the flag. Mr. Scott. During Monday's debate, State Senator John Scott argued that momentum was with those who opposed the Confederate symbols. Good afternoon. More areas of New Mexico are underwater. During this, the rainiest early July the state has seen in years. People in Torrance County say it is the worst flooding they have ever seen. Roads in Torrance County are washed away. Some have been turned into lakes. Yes, there is a road under this. Sheriff Heath White says some areas are simply unsafe. We have several br bridges out here um, that overpass arroyos and, and they're overflowing. Uh, they're going above the bridges about two foot. And it hit the center of town too. Daniel Senna was surprised to find a new amenity added to her Moriarty Hotel this morning. We do have some ditches in the back that are drainage, but once those filled up, forget it, it just went right in our parking lot. This lake, as she calls it, is not only the new center of attention outside, but inside too. We try to make it humorous for them, and in that way they're less you know, likely to complain about it. In the past 24 hours, Torrance County was hit with hail and at least an inch of rain. Just a few blocks over from the Comfort Inn, the Best Western and Moriarty also faced flooding problems. We're cleaning out water. <laughs> A lot of rain, a lot of rain. Managers say around 200,000 gallons of water had to be pumped from here to make room for the possibility of more floods this week. In 16 years, we've never had flooding this bad that I've seen in our parking lot. It's actually went all the way, almost all the way up to the point of there. While the rain may seem like an unwelcome guest, many, including Senna, are choosing to look on the bright side. We're kind of hoping for a little break, but we need the break. Really do. So it's Incredible like, high-resolution satellite imagery here of a monster storm that is hitting southern Japan as we speak. That's Typhoon Shanham already cranking up humongous waves. Look at the size of those things. That's in Okinawa, and Okinawa is going to take a pretty bad hit from this storm. We've already had a couple wind gusts over 80 miles an hour there. Now, if you're not familiar, southern Japan, you look at those small islands down there. That's all part of Okinawa Prefecture, so that's a part of Japan. Of course, you've got the city of Okinawa as well, which is also going to take a pretty bad hit. Now, after it hits Japan, we've got to turn our attention to eastern China. Still going to be a very formidable storm. Big city. We have turned a deaf ear to a lot of things. It's time that we change. The debate over the stars and bars spilled onto the state house lawn as flag supporters clashed with opponents. First of all, it wasn't the Civil War. So you've been brainwashed to call it the Civil War, and unfortunately, they told me and so many of our. Well, a slave is one that's brainwashed. Take the smack in the face down. 
It's not about that anymore. It's about the love and harmony now, right? I'm going to send it adjourn. The Senate will hold a final vote on the flag Tuesday. Then it goes to the state's house for a count by the local newspaper suggests.